Mr. D, kayaking wildlife photographer. Now most of you know if you follow my channel that I use exclusively inflatable kayaks. I want to talk about today why I use those and then some of the great things to have, what it takes to set up, what equipment do you really need to get all started and going and doing all that kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about that and the first thing I want to talk about is why inflatables. Well, there's actually two big reasons for me. One, portability. I want to be able to take maybe one or two kayaks with me without strapping it on the hood of a car or a truck or having the added expense of, of having a kayak trailer. I can just unfold it out of the trunk of a car or the back of my pickup truck, inflate it, and go. And one of the other things I looked at, along with the portability, I needed to have something that I knew was going to be durable, safe, and something that would really get me through my day and I don't even have to worry about any other issues. One of the things that I picked up on was a company called Advanced Elements. Advanced Elements, in my eyes, makes one of the best inflatable kayaks on the market today. Now, trust me. There's a lot of them out there. Some of them are floating marshmallows. They're dangerous. Uh, they don't have uh, outer skin protection. They, they're not built right, but they're priced at about $200. And here's a case of where you get what you pay for. The materials used in making up the Advanced Elements Kayak is very important. And what I like about it, they have an outer shell, then they have a canvas material which enclosed inside of that canvas material is the airbag itself. Now, when I'm looking at that, I have outer protection here and it's done with a, a PVC material, PVC tarpaulin I think it's called. And then you have another uh, canvas material in here which houses inside of that. We unzip it and you can pull out the air chamber itself. Now, to me, that's triple protection out there. Now again, most of you know I live in Florida, so I'm dealing with, you know, alligators and jumping sturgeons and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I wanted to make sure that one, it would be safe, and two, it had to be portable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about what it takes equipment-wise to get the inflatable kayaks up and running. Actually, it's not a lot of stuff. Basically, it's a pump. That's all you basically need. But we're going to talk about some must-haves and some nice-to-haves. Then we're going to talk about some of the other equipment that you're going to need out there, like dry bags and, and, and so on. So without further ado, hey, let's get into this. Now, there are a lot of inflatables out there that you can purchase, different companies. I prefer the advanced elements because of their... Uh, technical expertise, the manufacturing materials, and I trust them. So one of the things that you have to have is a pump. Now I recommend the dual action or double action pump here with all the appropriate fittings because if you have a drop stitch floor it takes a special kind of fitting. But the most importantly, make sure you have the gauge. The air gauge is critical. On a lot of the high-end inflatable boats, their PSI rating for their particular chambers is critical. So you want to make sure that you have a gauge that you can read that. Now, now you're going to have to have a good paddle. It's not a requirement, but the better the paddle, the easier it is for you to get around. But on the paddle, there's some things. They have splash guards here. If your paddle doesn't have splash guards, trust me, you're not going to have fun. Because as you reach the paddle up to go into your next stroke, that water from that paddle is going to run right down into your arm. So make sure that your paddle has splash guards on them. Now, depending on your particular needs, I have an adjustable furl. That's not required. But as you progress in your paddling techniques, you may want to look at you know, getting an adjustable furrow where you can set the degree of where you want that to go. One of the necessities you really want to have is a dry bag. And I'm going to explain that as we go. But there's two types out there. You have the standard dry bag like this. You open it up, you put your personal belongings in, your wallet, cell phone, whatever the case may be. 
and you roll it, you clip it, and it sets up kind of an air pocket. So, and then it has removable clips, which you want to click to one of your uh, D-rings back there. So if the unfortunate does happen, this thing will sit and float with your items in it. The other type of dry bag is called a quick draw deck bag. Now, I really like this. I use the heck out of this. It's great for small items. Uh, it's by Advanced Elements. It has a zippered front. It's kind of stout. If you want more information on that, uh, you'll find that in my uh, YouTube channel where I talk specifically about the quick draw uh, dry bag. One of the things you really want to have, if you have a sit-in kayak, is a dual action bailing pump. Now you can store that in your rear rigging back there behind the boat or whatever the case may be. But if the unfortunate happens and you get tossed out of your boat, you ride it, there's still going to be a significant amount of water in there and the boat's going to be unstable. So you use this to bail it all out and you'll be good to go. Here's the thing you may want to look at is a nice to have. Now I own four advanced element kayaks. I have a straight edge, the sport here, I have the uh, Expedition XE, and I have the uh, Tandem Convertible. Now the Tandem Convertible is 15 feet long with nine air valves in it. You're pumping this thing up, your arms fall off. So a nice thing to have is either a rechargeable or 12 volt uh, electric pump used for like air mattresses and stuff like that. They don't have enough demand to bring it up past the uh, PSI ratings, but it'll get the boat really close to where you use the double action pump here to uh, bring you up to the final PSI for that particular boat. But that's a, a nice to have. I use mine all the time. I also picked up a 12 foot extension cord that has the uh, like cigarette lighter adapter thing. And I run that through the back cab of my truck, run it out to the back so when I unload the boat, I just fill it up and good to go. One of the other things you need to have, it's not required, but if you do any long durated paddles, you're going to end up with calluses on the inside of these hands right here. I recommend paddling gloves. They're not expensive. You can get them pretty much anywhere, any sporting goods place. But you'll find out that that's important. Another item you want to look at, it's not a requirement, it's not a must have, it's a nice to have, and I'm going to tell you why. When I first started kayaking, I was in a sit-in, low profile, hard kayak. I hadn't been paddling very long. I pushed off a tree with the paddle. The, uh, the kayak dipped, filled with water, and threw me out. Not once, but twice. One of the things I didn't have, and because the paddle didn't have a tether on it. Well, what's going to happen? I'm in a, I was paddling downstream, so when I went over, the paddle released for me and continued going downstream. If I wouldn't have had my paddling buddy with me, it'd still be going downstream. So, it's a good idea to pick up one of these tethers. Hook it up to the D-ring in the back. But if you do have a case where you lose your paddle, it's in tether length. You just reach, grab your tether, pull the paddle back in, you're good to go. Now, things out on the water, you really need to have one, hydration. Make sure you carry one or two bottles of water with you out there. You're going to get dehydrated out there. You're working your core muscles. You may not seem like you are, but if you're doing a, a, a 6, 12, 18 mile paddle or something like that, and if you don't have snack foods like power bars and, uh, and hydration with you, you're going to be in trouble. Also things to have is sunscreen and deep off. Now, if you're on rivers, stuff like that, the mosquitoes will come in like B-52 bombers. And they will take a load of you if you're not prepped right. So spray yourself with off and that will uh, make your day very pleasurable. Any things? Do a recap real quick. You need to have a dual action pump 
with gauge. Absolute requirement. It'll make your life a lot easier because the PSI ratings on these higher end inflatables, they really stick to their PSI ratings. The other thing is a need to have and it's be required by law, again, is your life vest, whistle, and a light. If you're gonna be out at night, you have to have the light with you. That basically covers everything you need to have. Then we talked about the oar lanyard, paddling gloves, dry bags, deck dry bag, uh, the type of paddle that you're gonna use, and your dual action self bailing pump. That's basically all you're gonna need, folks, and you can go out, have a great time. So, hey, I'll see you out there.